coach how's the preparation been the past uh the past couple of days it's been great as you might imagine um a couple of days for the guys to recuperate um to try and get their bodies back on track again uh, we're not we're not getting bundles of time to prepare for for Sunday's game but I certainly think it's a good enough window for us all to be mentally and physically ready again um you know the attitude as always has been spot on and as uh, as I'm sure everyone might imagine there's a there's a great feel about the place and everyone's looking forward to Sunday 120 minutes that you played uh, on Tuesday night then how is the how is the body feeling how are you uh set for uh Sunday's challenge uh, I feel good uh, all considering I think you know, at the end of the day, one of the the physical silver linings of this year and the schedule and the way it's been is that we're used to the quick turnaround and it's not some great hurdle that we feel like we have to overcome. And I think that's a strength that we have going into this on top of being a, a fit team in general. Um, since the very beginning of the year and all the work we've put in, I think we're in a great place to continue to compete at a high level first and foremost. But um, yeah, talking to the guys after the game, I think it's been quite some time since uh, a few of us were in an extra time game. So it was nice to kind of get that out of the system and, um, you know, come out on top, obviously. But it was uh, just more of a growing experience for the team and a positive one, obviously, but uh, just something we're learning from and moving forward. But the guys mentally, physically, everyone feels great. Thank you, Dan. With that, we'll open the floor for questions. We will begin with the Tennessee and with Ray Hills with a question for the two of you. Well, I guess we'll start with Dan and then uh, go to Coach Gary. Uh, obviously, the, the reports have been looming about uh, Columbus's issues with the coronavirus. In terms of preparing, um, how does the mental side of you guys getting ready for this match, how has that altered, if at all, because of what's going on with Columbus? Um, I mean, for players, it's, it's very simple. It's not altered at all. We prepare to play when we're scheduled to play. Obviously we went through this whole situation and saga down in Orlando earlier. We know that the logistics can become, um, really hard to follow and not really worth investing in because you're not in control of it. Uh, we obviously had some news prior to the Miami game as well, similar to this situation. And we did a very good job of sort of compartmentalizing it and being ready for what we knew we could handle, which is the game. Um, frankly, we will be prepared to play on Sunday. Um, you know, if they want to reschedule, whatever that is, uh, it doesn't really concern us. We're ready to compete whenever, wherever. Um, and it's, it's super easy from our point of view. I, I honestly don't think there's a lot more to say than that, Drake. You know, the, the, the key here is, is for both groups to make sure from a, a purely health standpoint that it's, it's safe and sensible. And, and whenever um, that, that may well be, then fine. As, as um, Daniel said, we'll, we'll be ready. We're preparing for Sunday. If it's not Sunday and it's, uh, you know, a couple of days later, so be it. And if it's not to be and we end up moving on because of it, uh, you know, whatever it is, we, we, we'll be prepared. Thank you both. We'll continue with a question from Tim Sullivan uh, with Fort Clapham Country. Yeah, similar to that, what do you guys remember from whether it was in Orlando or Gary when you had the false positive test before the Dallas match of, of maybe the nerves of having to go in and test like um, obviously has turned out poorly for Columbus and, and some other teams over the course of the year, but has fortunately cleared up for you guys? Well, uh, to, to be perfectly honest, it's, it is such a difficult period of time. It's whether, you know, we, we want to you know, in our own moments say, well, we're living this now and it feels a little bit more natural. It, it doesn't. And, and it's, it, it would be brutally unfair for Columbus if this game for some reason doesn't take place. But it's, it's how we have to live at the moment. And, and the only thing we can all do is be sensible, is make good choices. And even then, you just do not know this, this virus seems to be incredibly contagious. And in the most innocuous of situations, it can, you know, it can, um, you know, cause the downfall of a group. So, um, you know, we're trying to do our very utmost. It's the only thing we can control. And, you know, the league, Columbus, whatever goes on there, um, you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take its course. And, 
Um, it, it, it's just, you know, no, there, there's no winner here. You know, there's no winner. If, if, if it's not meant to be, then, you know, fate deals its, its cards. We'll continue with a question from Avi Mood uh, with MLSsoccer.com. Thanks, Christina. Uh, my question is for Coach, but Dan, if you have anything to add, obviously feel free to jump in. Uh, many have considered Nashville to be an underdog coming into the playoffs, but last week Dak said he's never really felt that way. So what does the win over Toronto say about um, this Nashville side and how do you compare the threat posed by Columbus versus um, how you prepared for Toronto? Well, first of all, I think we, we, we're growing um, as the group um, with confidence in belief of what we are capable of and what we can achieve um, after every hurdle we jump. And, and that, you know, would normally go without saying. It was a, a very, very good performance all round on Tuesday night, not just a victory, but a comprehensive one against a very, very good team. So that does wonders for everyone's morale and, and uh, you know, positivity. And, you know, certainly as we go towards this away game in Columbus where, you know, we, but what was it, six weeks ago, maybe slightly more, we, you know, we fell foul of a 2-0 of a defeat. You know, it's a tough environment. There, there's not going to be, um, I wouldn't suspect a tremendous amount of difference in what both of these teams are capable of. And if we allow them to play their game, and to take control, then it will be an extremely tough night. But I think you've seen on multiple occasions, this group go about their business, they attack the game, they stick to a plan, and ultimately have, have come out on top where most people feel as though we, we maybe shouldn't have. And, and that's testimony to such a, you know, a, a spirited and, and talented group that we have and still growing. And I think that's the thing as well. There's so much more to come out of this group. We're starting to see one or two of the, the attacking players, um, you know, find a little bit more form. We could say that the defensive group in general have, have been at a very good level all year, but, you know, we're starting to see that combination come together now. And I think there's some, you know, there's some more to come out of this, this team. Sounds like Abby has a follow up. Do you want to continue? Sure, I'll ask it uh, now. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that the, some of the attacking players are kind of coming, starting to come into form. So, how much of a difference did it make to have all three of your attacking DPs playing the way that they did against Toronto? You know, if, if you look at all of the the top teams in in MLS, they've you know, they've normally got a, a good complement of designated players in the group and, and who are very productive, predominantly in a, in a creative sense. We've been unfortunate in the fact that we've either had someone injured, we haven't fulfilled all three slots, or in, a, in, a, in the process of our growth, there's just not been much of a connection. But all of those things are starting to come good now at the right time. You know, the addition of, of Yonder has, has, I think, helped the group. Um, Hanny is coming back from some niggly problems. Randall's probably been, the, you know, the most productive out of our attacking um, group of players. And, and now to bring all three of them together and to see them um, producing on the field, I, I think puts a little bit of doubt in, in an opponent's mind, but also gives the rest of the group another dimension and a lift. So it's, it's certainly very, very pleasing to see all three of them out there. A question now from Ben Wright with uh, Broadway Sports. Yeah, Gary, it's been a little over two months since you, since you played Columbus last. Um, and obviously they didn't have Lucas Celerion fully healthy. But what, what do you remember from that game? And, and how do you think Nashville has, has maybe changed since then? And, and how could you match up against them? Well, no, no Nagby that day either, if I remember rightly. No Williams. Um, those guys, that, that sort of spine, if you like, down the middle of the team um, have, have played their last couple of games and, of course, their first playoff game. I have to suspect that um, Caleb feels as though that's his strongest group and we, we didn't see 
much of, of all three of those guys. If I remember rightly on the day, we actually played very, very well first period. Um, you know, had some good control of the game and, uh, you know, looked like we were in a very decent spot. What we found and fell foul of was some clinical finishing, not many chances either way, but they, they were ruthless when they had an opportunity in front of goal and, and came out 2-0 winners. I think we're a better team. I think we're a more confident team. Some of the reasons I just explained. Um, are they a better team with those guys in it? For sure. You know, Darlington Nagby's top, top midfield player. Um, Zillarian has shown his, his creative capabilities. So it, it, it bodes well for a very, very good game. And, you know, we certainly won't go there with any fear after Tuesday's result. I'm not sure we would have done anyway, but we certainly won't after Tuesday's result. And, and we'll, we'll look forward to, I think, giving a better account of ourselves than we did, what was it, six weeks ago. Tim Sullivan with a follow-up question for you, Dan. Dan, your uh, defense has been obviously a strong point of this team all year. What uh, does it almost like take pressure off you guys? I guess to to see the the uh, attacking players really start to round into form, and obviously to uh, add a little bit of talent in the form of John Deere at this point. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the biggest thing for us is a back line and just in general our identity as a team and the culture that we have is we defend with 11 players and I think the relief and the joy that we have you know from the defensive side of the field to see those guys finally get the reward for all the defensive work they put in it's it's just the best because they help us out so consistently game in game out the energy the energy they put into the defensive side of the ball is um, you don't see it on other teams and it's a great advantage that we have to have guys that roll their sleeves up and get the job done defensively so it was obviously a tough period when they weren't really getting rewarded on the other side of the field and putting the ball in the back of the net but we always knew that there was going to be a gear that those guys could hit and would at a certain time and like Gary said this is a great time for them to sort of be syncing up and to to be confident so for us it's it's great we're going to continue to do what we do and improve on the defensive side but I, I still think we have an offensive next gear that we can hit and that we're slowly starting to sort of grow into and show. And it's, it's led by those guys that have been doing the hard work all year and are finally starting to, to click up top. 